Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this network time protocol for clock synchronization video, I'll be discussing basics of NTP, computational steps of NTP and a numerical example of NTP. So let's get started. Clocks are one of the most important components of computers and other devices. However, due to various factors, these clocks may drift from the standard frequency or tick rate and may gain or lose time with respect to the reference clock. And this time difference between the two clocks is called clock skew. This clock skew may gradually increase and eventually cause desynchronization of the computer clock from the reference clock, which could affect their normal operations. Therefore, it requires synchronization of the computer clock with the reference clock to minimize clock skew. Several algorithms or protocols were proposed for synchronizing clocks and network time protocol or NTP is one of them. Network time protocol or NTP is the most widely used protocol for clock synchronization. NTP is normally organized in a hierarchical client server model, meaning that one label obtains services from its upper label as a client and provides services to its lower label as a server. Each label of this hierarchy is called a stratum and is assigned a number starting from zero at the top label. This stratum number determines the distance from the reference clock. Stratum zero or top label comprises the most precise atomic clocks to provide the most accurate time to its lower labels. In other words, these are the devices that actually generate the time. Stratum 1 is directly connected to the stratum 0 or top label and receives the most accurate time from atomic clocks. It acts as a server label for its lower label or stratum 2 and so on. NTP can handle a maximum of 16 stratum labels in the range of 0 to 15. Here, each stratum label introduces an additional network delay causing accuracy to decrease. Therefore, stratum 0 is the most accurate and stratum 15 is the least accurate. Several techniques are used to improve the accuracy and performance of NTP-based clock synchronization. For example, NTP clients can send multiple requests to the same server or different servers to determine the synchronized time as accurately as possible in case of any misconfigured or faulty server. Let's look at how NTP computes the synchronized time. Here, the client and server communicate in a series of requests and responses. The client sends an NTP request packet to the time server along with its timestamp T1. Then, server receives the client request packet and records this receiving time as a timestamp T2. After processing the client request, the server sends a response packet back to the client along with its current time as a timestamp T3. Finally, when the response packet is received by the client, it records that time as a timestamp T4. The right hand side diagram shows that each communication includes all the timestamps up to that point. So here, we have got four timestamps, two timestamps T1 and T4 based on the client's clock and other two timestamps T2 and T3 based on the server's clock. Utilizing these four timestamps, firstly, we are going to calculate round trip time or RTT, meaning that the time is spent by the message in the network, which is T4 minus T1 minus T3 minus T2. Once we have got the round trip time and assuming that network latency for sending and receiving messages are approximately equal, then we can calculate the clock skew, which tells us the time difference between the client's clock and server's clock, which is T2 minus T1 plus T3 minus T4 over 2. Once we know the clock skew, or time difference between the client's clock and server's clock, we can compute the synchronized or correct time on the client by adding this clock skew to the client's current time, which is T4.
Now let's look at an example. Here we have got four required readings of time. First, client's time of sending a request to the NTP server. T1 equals 10 hours, 25 minutes and 10 seconds. Next, server's current time while receiving the client's request. T2 equals 10 hours, 25 minutes and 13 seconds. Next, server's current time while sending its reply. T3 equals 10 hours, 25 minutes and 17 seconds. And fourth, client's current time of receiving server's reply. T4 equals 10 hours, 25 minutes and 18 seconds. Note that the time format used here is hours, minutes and seconds. We should also include milliseconds, but for the sake of simplicity, I haven't included milliseconds. Now we are going to calculate round trip time, clock skew and synchronized time. Firstly, we'll calculate the round trip time using the RTT formula. After substituting values in the RTT formula, we get a RTT value of 4 seconds. However, for calculating the synchronized time, we need to calculate clock skew using the clock skew formula. After substituting values in the clock skew formula, we get a clock skew value of 1 second. Finally, we'll calculate synchronized time on the client by adding the client's current time and the clock skew value. After substituting values in the synchronized time formula, we get a synchronized time value of 10 hours, 25 minutes and 19 seconds. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.